the goal is to um, have our devices managed. Now, as you've seen earlier, there is a couple of components that are responsible for managing devices. Uh, one of the components that we find very important is uh, Azure Active Directory. Um, Intune, obviously, is uh, important. And what we want, whoa, 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 sometimes the zooming happens accidentally. Uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the, the devices that we have are now going to be listed or brought into the Intune database. Um, and that basically means that if we have, let's say this is our device that we want to manage. Um, for this device, we want the mobile device management client to be configured. Not only does it need to be enabled, also we need to tell um, to what Intune environment the, uh, the client is need, needs to connect. Um, in Intune, the component responsible for the communication between, let's say, the server side of things here at Intune and the client side of things at the device. Um, and the company, uh, so the, the company portal component is the, com the, the communication component. Um, so we want this communication to happen. And in order to get the, this going, we need to tell that client that um, it needs to communicate with uh, with Intune. Now, the uh, so let's just talk about, uh, and we uh, we will start with Windows. Um, Windows enrollment is the process that describes how a Windows device is going to be enrolled into the Intune database. Now, there is different ways to do so. Um, one way is to to go, for example, uh, the manual way. Um, the manual way, well, kind of sucks. Uh, we don't want to do that because, well, manual stuff is for end users, remember? But you know, for now, let's say that we, uh, that we, for example, have a quick configuration thing going on. Uh, we just want to manage the device quickly. Then manual is, uh, is not that bad. Uh, to manually enroll devices into Intune, we actually do have a couple of uh, different ways here. Um, one way is, uh, and this is Windows, remember, um, you can open up the settings app and within uh, within the settings app you can go and search for uh, accounts and then in accounts there is the section for access work for schools. Um, let me just show you what I mean with that. So um, I want to go and take uh, one of my computers here. Um, I want to take for example, Workstation 1. Um, in this environment, uh, Workstation 1 is a device that is, um, Workstation 1 is a device that is not part of any Active Directory. So in other words, this is a standalone Windows, uh, I think, 11 machine that, um, that has no connections to what kind of Azure Active Directory or Intune environment whatsoever. Um, now, if you want to manually enroll the device into Intune, you can go into uh, the settings app. Uh, within the settings app, we can then go into accounts here on the left hand side, access worker school. And then here we have a couple of different options. Um, if you check those options out, then what you'll notice is that um, we, we have the option here to, to add a worker school account. Um, but also we have the button down here that says enroll only in device management. Now it's up to you what, what you want. Um, now we talked earlier about that a computer uh, could be Azure Active Directory join. If you just run the connect function here, if, if this is what you want, then what you're typically doing is you're going to tell Windows that in your, um, in your current profile, we also want to take an Azure Active Directory user object into account. So we can just go and say, hey, just add that to this account. And, and from that point on, when you sign in into the profile, the local Windows profile, this account is also signed into from Windows. But it doesn't really sign you in into Windows being that user. It's just a connection between your current Windows profile and an Azure Active Directory account. 
So what you see down here is an other option that says, join this device to Azure Active Directory. Um, now, joining the device to Azure Active Directory like this will allow you to sign in into Windows using an Azure Active Directory user object. Um, now, I'm going to use the lazy way, so I have this, uh, this demo admin account that I'm going to use um, in the actual lab environments. They want you to use a certain user object, um, which is obviously better, but for my demonstration purposes, I just want to uh, show you what, what happens, and I can perfectly fine use my, uh, my domain or my global admin here. Um, so what happens here is that I can click that, uh, I can join the device into Azure AD, so just for the purpose of here. So you can go into Access Worker School, and then from here, you can choose to uh, Azure Active Directory join the device. Now, if this is done, you can see that it's now uh, fixed, and, and you can select switch account to actually sign in into this account into Windows. Um, so now the device is connected to Azure Active Directory. However, at this point, the device is not yet part of Intune. Um, you could, if you want to, still use the enroll only in device management. However, um, that is one way to do it. Another thing is that we can run the connect function again. Now it will pretty much come up with a different view. It doesn't allow me to choose join domain or anything. It just wants me to enter the credentials once more. And now what I'm doing is it this device is going to be enrolled into Intune if I use the sign in here. The reason for that is that we are currently already in a, well, Active Directory domain server, uh, in an Azure Active Directory environment. So here now the device is going to be registered and, and we will apply uh, a, a policy. Also what you get to see here is a message that says, well, if you are here and you want to check out the device management capabilities, click Access Worker School and then choose for Info and Sync. And that is what we get here. So we now have two registrations. We have the uh, connected to Contoso Azure AD, and we have the connected to Contoso Mobile Device Management. And here we do have a little info button that says, hey, indeed, well, we have certain areas managed by Contoso, the organization. We can see that there is a management server named manage.microsoft.com. And this is, um, well, anything that, that ends with manage.microsoft.com means Intune. Uh, and here also from the client side, we can go in and say, hey, I want this device to, well, now synchronize with the Intune server to see if there is newer settings that this client should, so that this client, that this client should use. Um, this is one way. Um, so you can do an Azure Active Directory join, uh, let's say, first. And then you can do an, uh, an MDM enrollment uh, second, basically. This is what you can do. Um, the result will be that the device, in this case, in Azure Active Directory, will be shown as a domain and as Azure, Azure Active Directory joint device. And you will see the device in Intune. Um, you can also, just to give you, a, the, 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 just to make you see, uh, to, to give you the opportunity to check it out, what it means, you can also skip the part where the device is going to be Azure Active Directory joined. And you can go in and, uh, and, and roll it in device management straight away. And there's actually a good reason to do so. So here we are in my other browser. Uh, this is the browser that is, well, connecting to the same tenant. Um, if I would now check out the, uh, the Microsoft Entra Admin Center here, and I go to devices and then the list of all devices, then what I get to see is that my C Workstation 1 device here is mentioned twice. One of them is managed in Intune. The other one is Azure Active Directory Joint. These are in fact the same device. Don't, by the way, be distracted by this value here. And um, this is something that I did in an earlier uh, stage last week. Um, so this has nothing to do with, uh, with what I've done just yet. 
but because of the two steps that I took, um, this device is now named, well, mentioned twice. It's it, one time it is the Azure Active Directory joint device. And also in the second time, what I did is enroll the device into Intune, but unfortunately, these devices are now um, well mentioned or, or used as if it's two different devices, which obviously is going to be uh, uh, quite confusing. So maybe, and, and this is just the way it, that it behaves. It, it happens like this all the time. And that, that this comes, this becomes a little bit messy. It doesn't mean that things don't work. It's just that, um, well, I am a, uh, a geek and I want my Active Directory to be nice and to be clean and to be, well, nice and tidy, let's say. Um, so this is something I do not really like. Um, with that in mind, let's now check out a, uh, let's check out an other setting which I always uh, I always forget where that setting is uh, located. Man, I sometimes suck with some settings. I do know where the setting is somewhere else, but I just don't know where this setting is. What do I want? I want. You know what? Let's go to the uh, to the other setting to the other location. Um, so, oh, here device settings. Sorry, device settings gives me a uh, option to configure some a setting that we can also find in uh, in Intune. Um, and that setting is still, okay, it's not where I was looking for. So let's go to the Intune portal here. If you go to, uh, in Intune to device enrollment, and if you uh, check out the Windows enrollment settings, then here you will find a setting which is called automatic enrollment configure Windows devices to enroll when they join or register with Active Directory. And here we see a value, a, a setting which is called the MDM user scope. So if I go back to the setting, configure Windows devices to enroll when they join or register with Active Directory. If I check out uh, uh, the actual setting here, I can see that the nobody is allowed to do so. But what if what would happen if I would enable this setting? So now, when a device is going to be Azure Active Directory joined or registered, something that we need to take in mind, um, then it should also automatically enroll into Intune. That's an, this is an interesting setting. So what I want to do now is I want to go to uh, this other computer, Workstation 2. I'm signed in. Um, I'm going to go and, and take the exact same activity here. So I'm going to go for settings. Then hopefully uh, my settings will open up uh, uh, quick. Virtual machines are not super fast in this, uh, in this setup. Um, and by the way, that also may be because my uh, well, the machines are well, a little bit out of date, but I'm going to leave that for now. Um, you don't need to install the updates just yet. We're going to take that uh, later. Um, but here in the, uh, in the accounts, okay, it's, it's even slower than I was expecting. What I can also do is see if the third workstation is, uh, is, is faster. Then we'll see which one of the two we can use for this uh, for this demo here. So let's go in and open up the settings. Yeah, this is a bit quicker. So here we are. So I want to open up the, the accounts again. Um, Access Worker School. Now I'm going to go and do the same thing. I'm going to go and say, hey, I want to connect the device here. And I want to join this device to Azure Active Directory. So I'm going to go and take the exact same steps. Uh, but now I have made a change um, to go and say, hey, but if the device is joined to Azure Active Directory, I also want to enroll it into Intune, which is sort of part of the process now. I may be a little bit too fast trying this. 
maybe it would have been wise to wait, let's say 20, 30 minutes before, well, we are sure that the setting is active, but I'm just gonna try it anyway, because what I'm expecting here to happen is that the setting or the, the behavior is going to be different. Uh, because now not only will I enroll or join the device into Azure AD, but I wanna, I wanna make it part of Active Directory, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Intune straight away. So here it says, okay, who are you? You wanna join this to uh, to your Azure Active Directory? Yes, this is what I want. Um, then we will just uh, check out what is going on. Please wait while we set up your device. So we'll just be a little bit patient, which uh, to all of us is probably very, very difficult. Um, so we now have the device in Azure Active Directory, but if I now use that button to open up the connected to Contoso's Azure AD, I also have the info button in that same line, check it out, and it's also connected to something with managed.microsoft.com, so that means into. The result now is that the device that I have, and now let's go back to, uh, to the list of all the devices here in this environment again. Um, I can see that this Windows uh, Workstation 3 is listed only once. It is Azure Active Directory joined. Oh, it's not, well, it doesn't know yet there is Intune. We'll just have to be a little bit patient for that because it will know this in the end. Um, and from the Intune environment, if I check out my list of devices here, then um, if I am patient enough, Workstation 3, we'll check that later, Workstation 3 will now also be listed as a, an Intune managed device. It just takes a little while, so um, we have to be patient here. But this setting will actually change these things. It's, it's an Active Directory setting um, that you want to be looking into. And that means the setting that you will be looking for is uh, enroll devices, and that means uh, uh, into, uh, into Intune, uh, into Intune, when a uh, device uh, uh, joins or registers, registers, registers with Azure Active Directory. This setting, uh, which you can switch, for example, to uh, can set this to all um, so you can say hey i want this for everything to happen here then well you could make it a little bit more easy and keep your azure active directory a little bit more clean okay this is take it don't worry it's gonna be better <laughs> it's gonna be better it's uh, now in the process right there is something coming in um, and also here in the uh, in the Entra portal, um, at one point it will show that my, here you can see that uh, now it behaves as expected. It says, hey, see workstation three. It is now, um, well, it's probably not running Windows 1.0. We don't know yet. That would be so cool if this was 1.0, but it's not. Um, so, but it's as Active Directory joined and it's part of Intune. So we, yeah, we now have more info and as soon as we have uh, the latest info, everything will be populated uh, just uh, quite nicely here, yeah? but that's just a, uh, a matter of time. Huh? The devices, the virtual machines are actually quite, quite slow in this, uh, in this environment. But this is a little bit better. Um, this is a little bit better. However, however, there is a requirement for this to work um, the requirement here is that the user that has signed in, so the, the user uh, uh, um, has to be, must be a local admin in order to make this work, right? So the manual way, the user has to be local admin. Otherwise, uh, like let's say a normal user or a standard user is not able to perform these activities. Um, so the manual way, now there is one, little problem with this setting here uh, there is one little problem and that problem is that it does not only enroll devices when they join Azure Active Directory it will also happen when a device registers with Azure Active Directory now imagine the next thing 
So let's say this is your uh, this is your house. So here we are in our house, right? So this is like a very traditional uh, house in Belgium. Um, and then what we do is we have a computer here. Let's say we have a uh, a, a Windows computer here, and you want to install, for example, an app like uh, Teams or an app like Outlook, or for example, the the OneDrive for business client these are typical applications if you use these applications to sign in uh, into azure active directory but just by signing in into the app this will uh, this what will happen here it will register the device it will register the device in azure active directory now what will happen here and roll devices when a device registers with Azure Active Directory will, because of this, also try at least it will try Intune enrollment because of that setting. Now the result of this, if it works, and you know it works, um, you will accidentally be managing a lot of devices in Intune. That sucks big time because well you have a lot of work. Being in IT, um, there is work enough already for you, and you certainly do not want to have devices to be enrolled into into accidentally. This is a home computer; we don't need to touch that device. So one of the things that we can do in Intune, and this is a setting that we want to take in Intune, we want what we want to do: we want to set up some uh, device type enrollment restriction. Um, I'm going to show you where that is. So, um, so in the Intune portal, and I, I can totally understand if this is your first time um, working with the Intune portal. Uh, this might be uh, a lot. It might be uh, uh, confusing even. Uh, this is just a matter of getting used to this portal. Um, typically, if you want to do, if you want to do settings that are related to uh, devices oh by the way now we can see that this device is nicely in intune it's uh you right? can see the version of windows the user that goes with this um now if you want to check if, if you want to so if you want to check the setting which is the setting device and hold type enrollment restriction you want to go into device enrollment into uh device uh here the enrollment device oh platform restriction okay microsoft probably has renamed the setting. So I'm gonna change the text here. Sorry for that, let's do this. Uh, it's the enrollment device platform restriction. That setting, if you check this out, you can, it doesn't matter if you check Android or Windows or Mac or iOS, or any of those, you just click all users here. Um, you can then see that we have settings related to any operating system and one of the things that we want to do here in platform settings is we want to for windows mdm we want to go and block personally owned devices from being enrolled this setting if you block this one you will go and uh, well this allow users to manually enroll devices into intune especially by accident so um so here we have a setting that we want to do and that setting let me just uh, do a little arrow here um we want to go for uh well we want to block personally uh, personally personally uh, uh, on on windows device um because we don't want to accidentally enroll those devices um that is one of the things um, what you what you uh, so, so this helps this is one of the the manual ways uh, there's actually also another manual way um, the other manual way is um, download uh, and and download and install the uh, the company uh, portal app um, and then from within that company portal app you want to uh, you want to uh, well start enrollment 
uh, start a moment here which will just go in and uh, it will go through a wizard. Basically, what happens that wizard here will do the uh, will do the work for you. Um, also here you must be local admin, and there's also a third option, and that is you can browse or navigate. You can use your browser, go to the uh, to the web portal of the company portal, which is uh, you want to go to uh, HTTPS and then portal.manage.microsoft.com. Oh, Microsoft.com. And also from here, um, you can go in and you can navigate for uh, devices. And then in that devices section, you can go in and so, and you can say, hey, enroll this by um, in all of these cases, right? In all of these cases, the user must be a local admin because that is the only way to do it if it is the, the manual way. Um, now, of course, we don't want to do the manual thing. At least we, we can try to not to have to do the manual thing. But if you just need a quick, uh, if you need a quick client in Intune to make sure that well things happen, that you can test some stuff, then well then there's nothing wrong with uh, manually enrolling the device into uh, Intune. However, uh, we may like it better if it would be a uh, an automated situation. Now, if you think about the the automated situation automated then we have a couple of options one option let's say automated uh, uh, option one the automated option one says that a device uh, the device is uh, currently uh, currently managed um, via uh, active directory main services and group policy if that is the case then what happens here is that uh, well obviously we have uh, we have the whoa. Uh, obviously, we have uh, okay. This can be. This could be better. So here we have, for example, Azure Active Directory. Uh, sorry, Active Directory Domain Services is here. Um, this device, in this case, is going to be uh, Active Directory Join, right? That means that this device is already connected to the Active Directory here. And now, one of the things that we want to do. Uh, in order to automatically enroll the device into Intune is we want to uh, bring this device. So the, so the step that we're going to take is uh, we want the device must be brought into um, hybrid Active Directory joint. That is what we want. We already have this setting here, right? This setting here is going to say, hey, if the device is Azure Active Directory joined, and that is what happens, that is what is happening if the device is hybrid AD joined, if that is the case, then we can go and auto enroll the device into Intune as well. So what we can do is we can set up a tool here. We talked about well, if you I'm not sure how how close you were with finishing all the labs, but one of the set yo, one of the uh, one of the thing that we need here is we need the, uh, the Azure Active Directory Connect tool to be configured. And there is a setting here that we need to do in there, and that is we need to enable hybrid AD join, because that is what we need. Um, the, re the result is that if the device, if we enabled hybrid AD join for this organization, then this device, which is Active Directory join, will automatically be also Active Directory, uh, Azure Active Directory Join. The reason is that if you enable the hybrid AD Join, then in your Active Directory Domain Server, uh, it will configure a service connection point. Uh, and that service connection point will automatically tell any Windows client that, hey, there is also an Azure Active Directory and you need to join that one. Um, that is what we need to take there. And the result in that case is that this device is now not only Active Directory joined, but also Azure Active Directory joined. That is what is going to be the result. Now we know that the result of this 
This is named uh, the hybrid AD joint, right? That is the result. But the important part here is the is that it's Azure Active Directory joint. And if that is the case, then this setting and all devices into Intune when a device joins or registers with Azure AD, yes, then this device will also be registered with Intune or enrolled into Intune. Um, however, it is pretty much using this same kind of situation. So that setting here, that step is the device should be hybrid AD joint. Um, the requirement is, the requirement here is that the user is still a local admin. Um, now, if the user is not a local admin, so let's say we can go and say, hey, but, but uh, 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 if user is uh, not a local admin, then we have another step that we need to take. And that step is that we're going to uh, configure a group policy object for Intune and Roman. That is the steps that we are going to take in that case. So, um, so if we need to uh, get this, uh, let's say, going, then um, so just to show you what this this would look like um, in our demo environment here, we do have a uh, a server one, I believe. Now, server one is going to become the server for the Azure Active Directory Connect tool. Um, so let's just uh, let's just sign in and see what we can do with this. In my server here, I want to open up a browser. I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be very very lazy. Um, I want to be in uh, what is it? I want to be in and oh, I want to be in entra.microsoft.com. This will bring me into the uh, into the Azure. Active Directory uh, Management Portal. I am using the wrong credentials because I need to use these ones here, like this. Then the password, very important. The next step is to go and set up the Azure Active Directory Connect tool. Um, this tool is. Um, well, this is not going to be the, the, the fastest demo ever, but you know, it's, it's going to be all right. So here we are in, in the uh, Entra portal. Okay. Um, now in overview, if I check out the overview here, um, you could see that we have not configured something with Azure AD directly connect. So just click that button go to Azure Active Directory Connect. Um, there is two options actually when it comes to uh, synchronizing your local Active Directory to Azure Active Directory. You can have Azure AD Connect or Azure AD Cloud Sync. Uh, if you want to check out what the differences are, then um, it might be useful to, um, to go and, and follow a certain link here in uh, moab.ms, go to my course today, and then here in show notes, I have a uh, I have a link here in Azure Active Directory resources. It says the differences between Azure AD Connect and Azure AD Cloud Sync. So it actually has a little table here that says what the actual differences are. So if you uh, if you are bored later today, then uh, well, this is something that you might want to read in order to get some extra info. One of the things that I need for Hybrid AD Join to work is Azure AD Connect. Um, Azure AD Cloud Sync does not yet support that setting. So I'm going to use for uh, Azure AD Connect here. Um, this needs me, uh, this wants me to download the Azure Active Directory Connect uh, installer. Now um, let's just go in and, uh, and run it. So let's just go in and uh, get rid of some. Uh, some settings here. So this is the uh, Azure Active Directory Connect tool. There is a couple of agreements that we have to make. Um, if you install Azure Active Directory Connect, 
Um, well, first of all, you agree to stuff that you don't read anyway, so let's move forward. Here we have two options. You can use the express settings, or you can do a custom configuration. And from today off, you will never, ever, 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 ever use the express settings. They suck. Um, and what sucks the most, actually, about the express settings is that it's going to synchronize the entire domain. Everything in there, including those user objects that you don't want to see in Azure AD, including groups that you don't want to see. Just use customize. From that point on, you can just, you know, leave all the defaults. So I'm going to go and just click install. That's okay. But you never use express settings. Always choose customize and then leave the default because... When you do custom, at least at one point during the process, you will get the opportunity to select which organizational units in your organization in Azure, in Active Directory Domain Services should be synchronized into Azure Active Directory. So that is very, very important. Never ever use express settings. If you see someone using this with any express settings, you can smack them in the face. And you can and you can and you can say regards from Alex. It's his slap in the face that you are getting. Um, you can just do that. Um, yeah. If if you, can you go slap up, in the face anyway, and not have to say regards. Yeah, you know you can do it anyway, right? <laughs> you just smack them in the face. It's not allowed. Uh, well, smacking them in the face is allowed. On the other hand, if they smack back, good because they might be stronger than you. Huh? That's uh. I, I am I am you know I'm very well I'm let's say strong without I want to say strong I just that I'm that I I'm tall let's say so people get scared easily by me but if you're if you're smaller than just um and um well okay good it uh, it works so here um, I have a couple of settings in the uh, Azure Active Directory Net tool um, which are about for example what about the password uh, do you want users' passwords also to be um, uh, copied, or, well, not really copied, but uh, it's, a, it's an encrypted form of the password. Do you want this to be stored in Azure Active Directory? The best practice or the recommendation by Microsoft is to enable that. So you want to enable password hash synchronization. If you do have reasons not to want to allow that, then you could use pass-through authentication or some federation solution. Um, I want to go and use password hash synchronization. Um, then one of the things you can do is, hey, do you want to allow single sign-on for your corporate desktop users? Yes, that would be a nice solution. Then I have to tell what Azure Active Directory account I have to start managing this stuff. Again, just, uh, oh crap, no, the, let's uh, try this again. So here we go. So just enter the global admin username and password in here. Um, then, because I chose custom, I have options for uh, I have options for uh, what do I want to configure to be synchronized from Active Directory Domain Services towards Azure Active Directory. Um, so I'm gonna add Contoso.com here. So I'm gonna say uh, I want to create. An Azure, uh, a new account for that register for the synchronization, and I have to just tell uh, which account is the admin for that domain. This will add uh, Active Directory Contoso.com to be part of the synchronization. Um, then um, I need to go in and let's see what the next question is. It says, hey, you know what? You want to have Contoso in this demo, by the way. Uh, my Azure Active Directory domain is not named Contoso. So therefore it says, hey, there's something weird going on with the domain. So I'm just going to go and say, I'm going to continue without matching UPN suffix. Um, just for this demo, typically you don't have to do this because typically you would say that your, your current Active Directory, your on-prem Active Directory here, hopefully has the same name uh, like Contoso.com as the Azure Active Directory has from those. So this typically is a match. Uh, in my environment, because of the demo environment, it's not. So I'm going to allow this to happen. Um, then here we have the option to not sync everything, but make decisions ourselves, right? 
So I'm going to switch things off and maybe I want uh, the development and the IT department and the managers department and marketing and research and sales and maybe some devices as well um, in there. But I don't want any other things. I don't want information about, let's say, the local users or any other things. Just, you know, all the only the ones that we actually need. How are we going to uniquely identify our user? I'm going to do this by default, which is the, uh, the user principal name. Uh, no filters for now, just synchronize all user and devices which are in the organizational units that I just chose. In optional features, we could, for example, choose to allow password write back, allow write back, which is nice because typically the, the, uh, the synchronization is one way traffic from Active Directory Domain Service to Azure AD, but for some capability, for some options, we can also allow a certain write back functionality um, depending on well what um, write backs based on well what you select here, right? I'm gonna just leave these. Um, device write back is at this point grayed out. Um, we can add this later. We have hybrid AD join components enabled, so I'm gonna do this. Um, for group write backs, I can tell uh, if I have a group in um, if I have a group in Azure Active Directory that I also want to be in uh, that I also want to have in uh, in uh, an Active Directory domain service. Where are we going to place that? For now, I'm going to choose the IT organizational unit. It might be um, it might be smarter to um, it might be smarter to uh, create a special uh, create a special uh, organizational unit for that, just to uh, get a clean environment. So, um, what I'm doing now is I went the, I went through the entire environment. So I'm going to configure all this, start synchronization when configuration completes. Um, well, no, I'm gonna. Well, you know what? Let's. Um, so this is going to do the uh, synchronization. Now it's it's first. There will be the, uh, the configuration. Um, this takes a little while for us to uh, to complete. Uh, but once this is all done, um, I want to go back into the configuration here, and then I want to enable the hybrid AD join feature. It's something hybrid AD join is something that we cannot easily that we cannot automatically um, enable here. So um, I want to go in and uh, get back into that. Although single sign-on is something that gets into that direction. Luckily we do not have to wait that long, right? It uh, takes a little while. Enabling single sign-on, after it's closed. Typically this entire process only last takes like like five minutes or so. So here it's now configuring the uh, Azure Active Directory synchronization. So what at the end will happen, we do have in this list of devices, we have a client one and a client two here. These two devices, they are uh, they are member of the domain, so we have a, a member of that Contoso domain, and I want these devices to automatically enroll into into. They are currently managed using an Active Directory domain service, and now I want them to be in Intune as well. One of the things that uh, that will happen at that point, so um, so what will happen here? Check out this client. Uh, if the MDM client is active, and for example here uh, we have a component which is the uh, which is the group policy engine. Uh, group policy engine is by the way uh, a WMI kind of component. Then in theory, what could happen is that you may have a couple of uh, group policies here, right? Um, those group policies could be sent sent to this computer, but Intune might also send settings to this computer. In that case, between 
these two, between these, this might result, this might result into a conflict. Um, and that is something that you want to avoid. In Intune, we have a setting. So uh, from the Intune side, we can create something uh, which is in uh, which is which we, this is called a configuration configuration profile, um, and that configuration profile allows us to set the setting MDM wins over who calls the GP, and we can set this to be one. Um, if you take if you do this in Intune and you assign that to these clients, that will actually solve that uh, that will solve that problem of the conflicts because if there is conflict between group policy and Intune, then um, well, someone uh, someone needs to win this. Um, the setting only allows Intune to win. The setting does not allow group policy to win. So it's yes, it wins or no, it's a mess. Basically, the two two situations that we are in. Now my. Azure Active Directory configuration is complete. I want to go back in. Now, chances are, well, quite likely that at this point, um, the service behind Azure Active Directory Connect is indeed um, well, in progress, right? You can see that the synchronization is currently in progress, and therefore, I am not able to. Uh, I'm not able to, uh, to to quickly make my changes. So the only thing that I can do is sort of well, wait for this to finish, and then, uh, well, go back when it is finished. So uh, basically what I need to do is uh, just go in and check. Maybe one of the things I want to do is check out Azure Active Directory here and check out the list of users to see if this environment is now getting more and more users in the list. And as you can see here, we actually have uh, quite a lot of users already in uh, in this list so the synchronization well it is it is happening as you can tell here it is doing stuff you can also see that uh, some of these users are uh, on-premise sync enabled yes so we have for example uh, uh, Eugenia Lopez yes synchronized Gabriel Diaz yes synchronized Henry Ross yes synchronized Isaiah Langer is not synchronized so this is a cloud only user, right? This does not exist in local Active Directory, only in the in the in the in the Azure Active Directory. Just like that, we can see that now we uh, at this point I have 289 users. I'm actually not really sure if that's all that we have in the end, um, but that's what you get at this point. Uh, let's see if we have groups in this list as well. Um, so we do have a couple of groups. Um, and you can actually see that the source of these groups is Windows Server Active Directory. Oh, by the way, um, Windows Server Active Directory is also sometimes uh, how this Active Directory domain service is referred to. So um, here we have uh, ADDS, right? Uh, ADDS, Active Directory Domain Services, or very often also referred to as Server AD. It's an Active Directory that uh, lives on a... Uh, this on a server. Um, so with that, maybe we now are uh, in better luck to see whether or not the synchronization is done. Hopefully it is. Here we are. So it says now the synchronization server scheduler is suspended until the wizard is closed. All right, I want to configure this. Um, so I do have some tasks. And one of the things that I want to do is I want to configure device options. Here. Click next. Here we have the option to enable the uh, hybrid Azure AD join. Uh, so I want to go and sign into Azure Active Directory first in order to move forward. And then once we have been signed in at this point, back to Azure AD. Let's go. Let's go faster. Yes. And now I want to go and configure the hybrid Azure AD join. Maybe I also want to go and configure device right back or disable that. But for now, I want to be at configuring the hybrid AD, hybrid AD join. Now, um, I want Windows 10 for later domain joint devices to be 
in hybrid AD joint mode. You can also enable supported Windows down level domain joint devices. I am not going to support that. I don't want older versions. I don't want any older version on Windows 10 anyway. So I'm going to leave this. Then the next step is that we can uh, we can uh, we can uh, we can download a, a script to make it happen. I don't want to do that. I just want to go in and uh, I want to make sure that I am going to create a service connection point in Active Directory domain service of all this. But this is what it is. Click next. It's now going to check if this is all, all, all right like this. And um, well, the next step is to uh, finish this configuration. Once this is done, here the oh well, it was quite big, but it says hey yeah, uh, we have uh, we have done uh, we have done the uh, we have done the SCP part. I'm going to click exit. Um, so the synchronization should now work. Uh, maybe what I can do is check out one of those clients here. Um, and well, one of the things that would help is to restart the client because when it reboots it will well sign in into active directory domain services again and then it will get a new version of a group policy and then it will get that service connection point uh, assigned to it and the well the azure active directory join part will then take place so just uh just uh, uh waiting for this machine here now like i mentioned the this will work if the user is a local admin if the user is not a local admin then we also have a group policy that can help so i want to go and uh, sign in first i am a local admin by the way the user is a local admin Now, um, so we'll just have to uh, be a little bit patient. One of the things, by the way, that we can do to verify if the setting that we just changed has been, uh, well, has been received by the client and also applied by the client um, is that we can go in into the to a command line interface. So I want to do a right click on the Windows logo. I'm going to open up a Windows terminal, which I like. It's, uh, it's a new version of the command line interface, which you can customize into cool things. Uh, so in my case, I want uh, this. And then what I want to do is run a command. Um, that is reg str. No, that's not true. DS reg cmd, which is the directory service registration command line dot exe slash status. If you run this command, um, and scroll a little bit further up, then you can see at this point it's domain join, yes, Contoso, it's Azure Active Directory join, no, not yet. But this may take quite some time to automatically complete. So, you just, you, you, and so if you just enable that service connection point, and then you will want to, uh, you want to wait here, but as you can tell, this, this can actually take a little while uh, Microsoft also sometimes says that um, well an extra reboot would help um, yes that may help uh, but you know what you just want to uh, here, huh? so it's still here huh? as your age joint no main joint yes but you just want to be patient with that uh, it, it will happen at one point one more thing about that group policy um so if the if the user is not a local admin then the automatically enrollment in into is not going to happen so um what we can then do is open up the uh, policy management uh this is my policy management uh what we can do here is open up uh, into domain the group uh, policy object environment. I'm gonna go and, uh, uh, and click new. I'm gonna use, for example, my MDM enrollment 
Uh, oh, and did that in my segment? Fulfillment policy, for example, like this. Then what we can do is open up the MDM enrollment policy. Now I'm not, I, I'm, I am never sure where to find the uh, the correct setting. Um, so what I want to do is go in and click edit, like this. Uh, then here in uh, in the policy uh, administrative templates, something with Windows component. Um, I always ah oh, here we have MDM. Oh actually I know where it is. I uh, Sometimes I, I surprise myself here in MO, and that is maps. You see, I surprise myself by clicking the wrong buttons. MDM, and here we have a setting which is called um, uh, Enable Automatic MDM Enrollment using default Azure Active Directory credentials. All right, and here what we can do is go in and say, okay, let's just uh, let's just uh, enable this with the user credential, for example, or the device credential. Now, in my case, I do not have to do anything else than this. Uh, that is, if a user connects with Azure Active Directory, right? If you sign in into Azure Active Directory with your Azure Active Directory credentials, then we can take those credentials and we can read, and immediately, immediately we know which MDM application ID we would need for our Intune environment, because that is bound to the Intune uh, uh, into, into the Azure Active Directory environment that we have. So if you just leave this, this is that policy that we want if the user is not a local uh, admin. This is, the, um, this is the automation option number one. Um, now, the only thing that we, uh, that is left for us, unfortunately, that is that, um, well, we need to wait Right, because this, uh, these are settings that are not automatically uh, happening very fast. Okay, please sign in, you slow computer. And I, yeah, very good. Um, so here, what we can do is you can uh, clear the screen uh, here and just try to run that same command. DSRXCMD.exe/status once more. Still nothing. Takes a little while. But the result in the end will be that in Intune, we will uh, first in Azure Active Directory, we will see the devices listed. Not yet, right? We, uh, we have to deal with that first. And then the next step is that the device will also be in the list of, uh, will also be in the list of devices. I think it's better to this here. Uh, that this list of all devices, we should now, we should then also see some extra computers. Um, well, that is um, what we can do uh, with this.